<laughs> boy, oh boy, I sure love portable consoles, but not because I actually want to play games outside of the comfort of my home or anything like that, because, I mean, come on. And I live in a friggin' mansion. Playing games anywhere else would make me feel like some kind of a peasant or something. Nah, I love portable consoles because of all the friends I can make whenever I do decide to leave my manor. But the big problem with the Nintendo Switch is that the only way for fellow Switch owners to know that I actually have one, I've got to physically have it out. After being bullied and mugged in the gyno's office by so many jealous non-Switch owners, I realized just how much I missed the 3DS's Street Pass. You see, when the Nintendo 3DS is in sleep mode, it's constantly searching for other 3DS's nearby to exchange information with. Sometimes the information would contain data from certain games like high scores, best times, and things of that nature, but other times developers would get clever and let you exchange information with strangers that was a little bit cooler than that. At best, these features were a nice bonus, and at worst, they didn't affect your experience, and you could just ignore it or turn it off. But if you were wealthy enough to own a 3DS, yet somehow too poor to afford any software, then the system still came with tons of built-in games that were stored in the Street Pass Me Plaza. And the only way to properly play these games was to bring your 3DS around with you, provided you had room in your pockets next to your worms or whatever you carry around with you. Believe it or not, these games are actually one of my favorite things about the 3DS. Crossing paths with other 3DS owners would send your custom-made Miis to each other's plazas, and you can even make your own custom greetings and unlock different hats by earning plaza tickets from all the different games built into the software. You can meet a maximum of 10 Miis at a time, or have 100 in the queue for later on, and the whole idea is to use these Miis to help you for one round in each of the plaza's games. So if you wanted the sweet Virtual Boy hat, for example, then you were gonna have to work with the rest of the 3DS community, even if that meant you had to put your differences with Terry aside. The first program that was built into the Street Pass Plaza was a simple puzzle swap where you'd automatically get one random piece of each puzzle every time Nintendo would put a new one out, and the idea is to collect the rest of the pieces from other people. If you lived in Antarctica, or you were just lazy or whatever though, you could unlock pieces by using your system's coins, and to earn coins, all you had to do was walk around with your 3DS closed, and every 100 footsteps would give you one coin with a maximum of 10 per day. What I always liked to do, though, was carry my 3DS around with me while I worked at the Cheese Sandwich Factory, but I always changed the time to 11.20 so that I can get 20 coins every 90 minutes or so. Then I'd go change the time in the bathroom whenever business had slowed down, and after a couple of days, I'd usually have my coins all the way back to the maximum of 300, and it's because of all this tomfoolery that my 3DS thinks that the system settings are my favorite game. Trust me, I'm well aware that this is why nobody truly loves me. You can also use your coins in other games that supported Street Pass if you were willing to admit that you didn't have any friends, but for the most part, I would only ever use this feature anytime Nintendo would add new puzzles via the updates. They usually chose puzzles as a means to promote new games that were coming out, but sometimes they just added random ones for the hell of it. But don't ask me why they let Sonic Boom have one. I'm probably gonna be trying to figure that one out for the rest of my life. Spending two coins would unlock a random puzzle piece, which could be frustrating to get that last piece, but I think it's pretty weird that one of the challenges you needed to complete was to get three duplicate puzzle swap pieces in a row with your play coins. Man, I'm no Scott Steiner when it comes to math, but I feel like the chances are pretty high of being able to complete all the puzzles Nintendo ever puts out without ever getting this challenge done. Like, if that happens, then can you really never unlock this accomplishment and get that plaza ticket? Well, that sucks if you're a completionist, but I mean, I was lucky enough to get it done, so whatever, I guess. Even if you're a recluse, though, you can only buy so many pieces, because the only way to unlock the purple ones is to find other people out in the wild who just so happen to get one of these when Nintendo put the pictures out. Once you complete the puzzles, though, you can watch a fun little animation, but other than that, I wouldn't call this an actual game as much as I would an app. But still, though, it's quick, simple, and gives you a pretty good excuse to bring your 3DS around, so I'll go with a 3 out of 5 for this one. The next Street Pass game, Find Me, is one that could actually legally be considered a game, though. It's a turn-based RPG where your own me gets kidnapped by some butthole, and the only way to save yourself is to get help from other me's that you meet through Street Pass. The more times you cross paths with the same person, the higher the me's level's gonna be, and different colored shirts give the me's different powers. There's a few parts where the only way to get by is by having a me with a certain colored shirt on, but if you've got no friends who like these stupid colors, then you could just keep hiring me's with your 3DS's coins until you get the color you need. Eventually, they added a second part to find me that more or less just expanded upon the concept, but I always thought it was a little more tedious than the first one for having way more parts where you need me's with certain colored shirts to make progress. But overall, these are both still free games, so I'll give them a 3 out of 5, why not? At the time, most 3DS owners played these two games, so naturally Nintendo decided to make four more and had tons of extra hats, but since you had to pay for these, there were far fewer people who wanted anything to do with them. However, since I never really had any friends to go see PG-13 movies with, I went ahead and caved and bought them all, mainly so I can get that Virtual Boy hat I talked about earlier. After all, this is how I dress in real life, so what of it, loser? 
The first new game of the bunch, though, was Me Force, which was a much more interactive game than Find Me. Rather than there only being a handful of options on how to progress, this is a pretty standard side scroll and shoot 'em up. Meeting other people's Mii's or hiring your own with in game coins and place them throughout the stages, and after picking them up, you not only get an extra hit, but you also get a different weapon depending on what color shirt they're wearing. Overall, this is actually pretty fun, and it might possibly be my favorite Street Pass game, so I'll be generous and go with a 5 out of 5 for this one. That is a full standalone release or anything like that, just as far as what Street Pass titles are going for. Next up's Flower Town, where you basically just try and grow every type of flower in the game, much like what my dad's friend Lonnie does, except the flowers in this game are actually legal. After you gather some Mii's up, they'll come water your plants till they bloom, and watering them even more after that gives you seeds that you can use to grow other plants. And if any of the other Mii's also have the same game, then your flowers are gonna crossbreed with theirs, which is how you're actually supposed to get all the different types of plants. There's really no way to explain this one to make it sound more exciting, but for reasons I honestly can't explain, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for it. Probably because it's quick and simple, and I actually still play it to this day, because even though I've already gotten all the plaza tickets from it that I possibly can, I still haven't gotten every color for every flower breed. Personally, I would give this a 3 out of 5, but normal people would probably give it like a 1 or a 2. Warrior's Way is a game where you play as a very young Jackie Chan like monarch and start trouble with every other nation around you and attempt to conquer the entire region. And to do so, you need to build an army. And to build an army, you gotta greet other people through Street Pass and gain new soldiers based on how many Mii's they've accumulated in their plazas. Or if they've got the game themselves, you can challenge their army to build yours up even more should you win. But if you lose, then you're gonna lose a lot of your soldiers, so you better be sure you're gonna win. I like the concept of the game, but you divide the armies up by rock, paper, and scissors, and you have to guess which soldiers the enemies are gonna send out. If you have the advantage, then the numbers are cut in half, and if you throw the same thing, then the winner will be whoever has more troops. The game either completely relies on chance, or you gotta spend play coins to have a spy tell you what the other side's move's gonna be. And to make matters worse, I think some of these plaza tickets are asking a little too much. I mean, come on, how am I honestly expected to find 300 other people with this game? I don't leave the house that much, and even when I do, nobody ever carries their 3DSs around with them anymore anyway, so I'm probably never gonna be able to finish this one unless I start going to more conventions. Feel free to book me right here. I don't know how to wink. Warrior's Way gets a 2 out of 5. Monster Manor is pretty much a puzzle RPG where your only goal is to try to reach the top floor of a haunted mansion. You get different colored puzzle pieces from Mii's depending on what color shirt they're wearing that you place on each floor to uncover more ground in each session. The idea is to find the stairs so you can move up to the next floor and battle spooky ghosts along the way. Placing puzzle pieces of the same color next to each other expands the rooms, and you can also find treasure chests to get better weapons and more importantly, plaza tickets. Seems I didn't remember this game off the top of my ass, so I can't exactly say that it was very memorable, but after my initial, oh yeah, I ended up having some fond memories come back to me, so friggit, 3 out of 5. All the Street Pass games that came after this were pretty much for funsies though, meaning that you couldn't actually unlock goofy hats and accessories anymore, so honestly, I never really got too invested in any of these. I was always more concerned with finding other Mii's who had birthdays or lived in regions that I haven't marked off yet. And it's not that any of these new games are bad, in fact, they're actually designed to be quicker to play through than some of the others it feels like, which is exactly how Street Pass games should be. But even though finishing sessions on the new batch doesn't take too long, having so many Street Pass games piling up made what was supposed to be a quick activity turn into a long, drawn-out ordeal. At least if you're trying to play through everything with your new Mii's and still want to have time left over to watch Steven Seagal movies. Without any of the newer games offering rewards, I was kind of prioritized getting through the older games from the first batch so I could meet new Mii's in the plaza and get more tickets. If you're already content with your tingle hat and want a little more gameplay though, then I'd say that these later Street Pass games are definitely worth checking out if you liked any of the other ones. Slot Car Rivals is a racing game where you collect and race with toy cars, and the means that you meet before every race will upgrade your hot rod or whatever. I don't know what any of these models are called, I never even saw Men in Black 2, do you really think I saw cars? Cutting corners is frustrating at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's kind of satisfying, but other than that, there's really not much to say here. It's still pretty fun though, I guess. 3 out of 5. Market Crashers is a game where you play the stonk market with the Mii's acting as analysts, but they always give you advice that's so vague that I usually don't find it to be reliable. The idea is to buy low and sell high, which is something that I wish somebody had told me in real life a few years prior so I wouldn't have had to have sold my dad's DVD box set to home improvement just to make ends meet. Trust me, my ass is still cherry red from the spanking I got pulling that stunt. <laughs> I can see how somebody would like this game, but my philosophy on keeping the stock market out of video games is one that I've always been pretty consistent with over the years. 2 out of 5. Then there's the cooking simulator Feed Me, which oddly enough is a canonical spin-off to Find Me. You collect ingredients from other Mizi you meet through Street Passer with play coins, and you try your goddamnedest to follow the recipes as closely as possible. 
I've never really been into cooking simulators, but this one's clever enough, and I think they executed it pretty well, so even though I don't personally care for it, I'll still give it a 3 out of 5, just because it's probably objectively better than Flower Town, so I don't think it's fair for me to go lower than the score that I gave that game. Next up's Ninja Launch, and as the title would suggest, the idea is to launch visiting knees into enemies, preferably through the paths that have the best weapons that'll do the most damage. It is mindlessly simple, but by the time you realize that and decide to quit, the game's pretty much over, so I'd say that the game did its job quite well. 3 out of 5. Seeing that my last name means fisherman in the Latvian language, you might think that I'd be a big fan of Ultimate Angler, and... well? Yeah, I guess so. You get bait from the street past me's, and the idea is it catches many fish in each area of every island, so it's pretty much like Pokemon, except for the battling, interchangeable villains, deadbeat father, bike riding, rollerblading, Elite Four, and like 40 other things. And I mean, hey, there's fishing, so it's pretty much the same thing as Pokemon. The fishing mechanics are more than competent for some random little minigame, and there's a decent amount of content to keep you occupied for a while here. Playing through a session's not as quick as some of the other games, but I mean, it's fishing, what do you expect? And besides, it's not like it takes forever, you bimbo. 4 out of 5. Battleground Z is a more serious sequel to the original Battleground, where the main character's evil brother from space kidnaps his son, forcing him to team with his greatest enemy to save the day before hilarity ensues in the aftermath. Pretty sure that's right. Okay, so all award-winning comedy aside, this is a game where you fight hordes of zombies off because it came out in 2015, and that was kind of the hip thing to do at the time. And to fight all these butt wagon zombies off, you need to save everyone you encountered through Street Pass, kind of like Me Force, and accomplish whatever odd jobs it takes to get the job done. The weapons are pretty funny, and the gameplay is solid for a quick little minigame that was never really meant to be all that deep in the first place, so I'm gonna go with a 4 out of 5 here. And then finally, we have Trek. This one's got you and all your little me buddies exploring jungles, looking for artifacts, and documenting animals. Depending on how many footsteps the Mies had when he got their tag determines how far they're able to walk in each session, which I think's pretty clever. I also like how they use real-life pictures of animals that attack you, even though everything else is so cartoony. No, seriously, I actually like that. It's pretty funny. All in all, there's nothing I really dislike about this game, so I'm gonna have to go with a 5 out of 5, because, I mean, who's gonna freaking stop me? At the end of the day, I'm well aware of the fact that the majority of 3DS owners never really gave a monkey's nutsack about the 3DS's Street Pass features, and it was mainly just nerds like me who opened the app up over 2,100 times and played for over 220 hours. And I've always been the type of person to make sure to close games when I'm not actually playing them so I can keep the playtime as accurate as possible, so trust me, these numbers aren't lying. Regardless of how much you may or may not have liked the 3DS's Street Pass features, I think it's something that's missing big time with the Nintendo Switch, and I know I can't be the only one who thinks that. I know that Nintendo specifically got rid of the swap note feature because it led to miners sending naughty imagery to strangers, and like, if it's your job to mine caves for minerals, then I don't see why it's anybody's business what kind of pictures people are sending you. Although, if those miners were also underage, then I could totally see why Nintendo would back off on it. Still, though, it's not like you could even share anything remotely personal through Street Pass, so I've got no idea why Nintendo would get rid of it, because even though silly little games like these probably didn't even sell one system, they definitely made it a hell of a lot more enjoyable for me, and more importantly, it helped me make some really cool new friends, and now I've got no idea how I'm supposed to make more. Oh well, suppose I could try Craigslist again. Huh, this guy seems pretty cool. Maybe I should meet him. Uh, excuse me, are you Bob? Uh, yeah, sure, hey. Wanna make five bucks? Psh, heck yeah, I wanna make five bucks. What I gotta do? Well, open your mouth, close your eyes, and you'll get a big surprise. Uh-oh! Ah! Someone to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support. Don't like this video, it was just a banana. Yeah, now suck my c-